Hello, Charles here again for MGN. So I'm with you Metroid Dread. I've received an early copy. Uh, I've managed to play the whole thing from start to finish. And it's not a bad game. In fact, it's a well-designed game. However, it's not something I really consider memorable. And after 20 years of waiting, it re really it should have been a lot more than it is. So that being said, let's get into this. So story-wise, we saw from the trailers there was a lot of hints about a lot of things. And... I really expected this to be very lore heavy and while there are moments that do have some pretty big lore implications there really just was not much there it, it really felt sparse I mean, there wasn't really too much added in terms of lore about the Chozo at all in fact everything we learned about him was just incredibly generic and could have been applied to pretty much anything it's just a typical generic war story with two sides then teaming up for the greater good and then someone getting power drunk. It, it, it's just... It didn't feel like Metroid. It just felt like you could just cut and paste that into so many different franchises. It really just was underwhelming. I mean, Kraid as well. We saw Kraid in there. I can only... Now, really, all I can say is Kraid was in there for marketing. There's no explanation of why he's in-game. There's no explanation of how he's alive. The boss fight, which I'll get to later, is actually frustrating as hell. I mean, there's a bit, there's a big implication right near the end of the game, which sets up something quite interesting, but everything before that was just inconsequential, dull, and should have been a lot more. I mean, to, to try and sum up the genericness of this plot, I mean, the bad guy is called Raven Beak, because he has a Raven Beak. Uh, it's it's just painful, honestly. It's just so painfully generic. I I just can't get over that. Sound wise, I mean, it's another area. The game falls flat for me. The quality of the sound effects are serviceable at best. I mean, they're not they're not great quality as far as I'm concerned. I've seen some people praise it, but I I think the mixing generally is pretty bad, and just the overall quality of the sound package should be higher. But again, it's a Switch game, so there is limited hardware there deal with audio files and graphics and everything else that's going on so that's that's probably why but I've, I've found the mixing to be lacking nothing really had oomph I mean one thing I will give it praise for is you could kind of tell when enemies are above you and moving left and right you could kind of tell where they were if you couldn't hit see them so um it's not completely awful but everything just felt to lack weight to me and then there's the soundtrack and this is by miles the worst Metroid soundtrack I've ever come across so it, it's just most of the music's painfully generic and uninspired and just completely unmemorable right, the, the classic tunes and the remixes of those are fantastic but when it comes to the original stuff it just falls flat the somber tones of Metroid's gone nothing really sets the mood and the boss fights which should be really dynamic and really full of life they're just dull and lifeless I mean there, there's one fight with like a tentacle monster and the music is just so painfully generic and unmemorable, it, it's actually crazy. You know, I still go back to Metroid 2, Samus Returns, and Fusion, Primes, and I still listen to those soundtracks these days and love them, but there's nothing here that was good. In fact, a lot of the areas, they just lack ambient sounds, like if you listen to a Chozo Ruin track for Metroid Prime, there's loads of little things in the de in the distance, loads of little ambient sounds that makes it feel enticing yet also dark. Like there's an anxiety inducingness to it. There's a real tone there, and that's just gone. And then we get to the gameplay, and it, this for me is a problem problematic area. It it really is. I mean, overall, it's more Metroid, and that's not a bad thing. Really, is not a bad thing. The gameplay is very linear and does nothing really new. It's kind of like a mix of Fusion and Samus Returns. It's, there's not really that much exploration to do. Everything's in a very linear fashion. And it is well designed. But it just... It, it lacks that, that special something to me. And there are a lot of cool new powers, which is a positive side. But they're hardly used. I, I was absolutely mind blown by how underutilized these powers were I mean, quite often you just get a new power you use it briefly to access a new area and then you can forget about it the entire game almost the entire game anyway yeah there might be this little point here or there where you have to use it but it, it feels like an afterthought 
And there is, it's, it's crazy to me because there's so many abilities in this game. And while it is kind of true with most Metroid games, you get them, you use them to progress briefly, and that's it. it here it just feels disappointing. It's been 20 years and they've added so many new abilities and they couldn't come up with a more creative way to use them. It just, it, it sucks. And I mean, the game also just starts giving out power-ups like they're candy. You get them so fast. It just feels like meaningless candy. It's like, oh, here's another power-up. Here's another power-up. Here's another power-up. You just use them briefly and then you can forget about them. It, it would be nice to see some of them using the boss battles like the cloaking ability. And the grappling hook, things like that. It would have been really cool to see the grappling hook and things like that used in boss battles, camouflage, whatever. Just rather than those powers just being there for, as an arbitrary brick wall for you to be able to progress further, to actually have them feel like they're part of the world and not just a game mechanic to wall gate you away from other areas. Uh, on the quality of life front, there is um. There's additional markers, you can play six, but I, I just don't really see any use for them. Exploration feels like a chore anyway, and there's a lot of travelling going on, and quite frankly, the exploration just becomes tiresome really quick. And I don't really see any need for the markers, there's logos everywhere for things you've found that you haven't been able to collect yet. And when it comes to finding the main objective, you pretty much have to just search for that yourself anyway, and once you do, you're just going to go straight there. But it can become very unclear where you're supposed to go sometimes. You can get lost. Now, on the EMI front, so the EMMI units, I mean, they're cool at first. They're, the counters start off quite tense. They feel very much like the original Resident Evil 3. It does feel tense. You see them and you've just got to leg it. And the music there is quite good, actually, for the EMI, EMMI units, the ME units. They are... Um, they feel sinister when you first come across them, but again, this is the problem. At first, they're great, but then most, like most things in the game, they just start feeling inconsequential. Very quickly, you find out how to take them down. Running away from them becomes trivial, even with this, the unique abilities some of them have, and you just lose all sense of fear very quickly. There's no dread here, and they offer very little shake-up to the formula, ultimately. There should have been something defining about Dread, and they just ended up feeling really insignificant and like an afterthought. And uh, it's it's not even just that for me. It's it's like I don't, I don't understand what the point of them even being added was. It's like they had this grand grand scheme, and then they just dumped it. And every time you get to take one down, you have to fight this thing, and you fight the same thing every single time to get the ability to kill an enemy unit, right? Every single time, it's the exact same fight. The whole thing just feels like a chore. It's repetitive, it's uncreative, it's unexpired. It's just boring. I mean, the overall enemy variety is technically decent, but like I said there, there's boss battle there, which is repeated, and there's other boss battles that are repeated about six to eight times. And it's just ridiculous. The amount of recycled battles in this game is absolutely ridiculous. It's inexcusable. And, I mean, even the ones that technically do change, it's like, oh yeah, they've got a shield. Well, that's fine. You just have to shoot the shield a couple of times with some missiles for it to break, and then the fight plays out exactly the same anyway. There's a overemphasis on the parry mechanic again. It's overpowered as well. It makes most encounters of life just mean meaningless. They're just dull and meaningless. I mean, oh, I'm low on health. Let me go up to that enemy. Let me find the window and then press the button. Boom, parry. Oh, look, I've got more health again. It it just feels poor. To be honest, it just feels overpowered and poor. And then to make matters worse, they're, re they're used in boss fights. But the problem with the boss fights is the timing window and the animations to telegraph when you need to parry are sometimes so bad. You just miss it. And then you quite often you die and you're put in a position where you never recover. And then you just have to fight that boss over and over and over again until you get that parry just right. It just... It makes the boss battles feel like a chore. It makes them feel boring. It's... It just isn't good. I, I can't help but reflect back on Kana, Bridge of Spirits, and the boss fights I had there. And they were some of the best boss fights I had in a long time. And then I 
I go back to things like Ridley, Infusion, Mother Brain, and then even things from Prime, like uh, the final fight with Ridley right at the end before you go and fight Metroid Prime. Those were memorable. Those felt great. There is nothing anywhere near the quality of those here. Uh, to, 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 on the positive side of the encounters, there is these, like, these little action scenes that make Samus feel like a complete badass, more than she ever has, and they really understand what makes Samus awesome. But when the rest of the boss battle is just so lame, that can't even save it. Uh, another issue I have with the game is its unique biomes. They don't really end up feeling unique. A lot of them end up looking quite similar. But there's also some really jarring transitions. Like suddenly... You're in a factory and then you'll go out this entrance, exit, whatever you want to call it. And then suddenly you're in a frozen area or a hot area and there's, there's no artistic transition to it. There's no intent to make that transition for organic. It's just like from one area straight to another. There's no organicness to it. It, it just feels lazy. It's like they, they just slapped them together. They didn't even care about making it feel natural or organic. They just slapped this stuff together. It's jaggy, there's no anti-alization, image isn't even 1080p, textures lack any real detail, and I don't just mean numbers-wise, like really sharp and clear and clean, I also mean just artistically. There's no grittiness, the, the grime and dirtiness, the tone of the old Metroid games is completely gone, it feels really generic. Geometry Troll is also really, really basic. I felt with the sprite work, they could actually make a much more organic feeling world with this 3D rendition they've made. Everything just feels really basic, really blocky, and just doesn't... doesn't scream Alien, doesn't scream Metroid to me. It just feels like any game made ever. It just... there's nothing here that really sticks out environmentally. Enemy-wise... That's a different story. The enemies do feel very much like Metroid and they're very well designed. And they do scream Metroid and they have that Metroid flair. Their designs are solid. Samus' design, however, in my opinion, I, I don't like it. Nintendo seem to have this obsession with just making Samus look like a toy. So many cheap plastic likes strapped to her. It just, She feels like a cheap Chinese toy. I just really don't like the, the new design and this obsession. They have with lights and just making it look like an action figure. I mean, even though her final design is actually, I actually do like it, but it basically feels like a Doom X Metroid fan art ripoff. It, it's badass, it doesn't last long, but again, it doesn't even feel original. It just feels like they've looked at Doom and just copied that. It, it, there's something missing from the heart here. There's something that doesn't quite feel right. And the cutscenes as well are really jarring. They're visually rough and it drops the frame rate to 30 FPS from 60. It just feels really bad. And just they feel choppy to me. I just don't like them whatsoever. I mean, I'd go as far as to say they should have made the cutscenes pre-rendered. I think pre-rendered would have done much more justice than having them in-game. The, the way they've come out in real time is just poor. So overall, I mean, for me, I mean, it is... I will say that... If you look at all the 2D Metroid games, this is probably the second best overall. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It's generally well designed, it's just it's more of the same. And after 20 years, I've, I would have liked something that feels much less dated than this. And things it does do right, it just doesn't quite get them as good as something like Fusion in my mind. Its boss fights are far too dull, there's no real memorable boss fight, and the final boss fight drags out too long. The plot overall for me was underwhelming. I, I was imagining so much more from all the hints and the trailers and it end I mean when I think look back of it there's not really that much here, story wise. Apart from one key thing, there is nothing else there. It just feels like padding. But again, it doesn't overstay its welcome and it gets the Metroid formula balance pretty much better than anything else. And it's not a bad game at all. It's well designed. It's just it lacks that certain Metroid feel that I expect from Metroid games. It just doesn't quite feel like it has the soul. And as a product being released in 2021, it shouldn't feel as dated. And since it's been 20 years, I would have liked them to be a little bit more risque in their design and really try something quite different rather than just stick to the same carbon formula. So in the end, I'm glad we finally got a new Metroid game. 
but after 20 years, Dread just, it's simply not anywhere near as memorable or as enough as it should be. So I'm just going to have, I'm going to have to give it a 7 out of 10. Metroid's back. I'm happy it's back, but I really hope Prime 4 ends up being something special. 